Cruise news. A cruise has been canceled after boarding. The cruise line promised a full refund of expenses, but did not do it. The cruiser got some help. I'm going to get you the details. Plus, the U.S. State Department has issued advisories regarding one activity at five popular cruise destinations. I'm going to get you the top 10 cruise news updates from across the cruise industry, and I'm going to get you the information fast. Coming up. Welcome to the Travel Scouts. My name is Jason and we are your cruise information channel. We'll get you the cruise news and information you're looking for quickly without wasting your time. So if you love cruising, consider subscribing. Let's go ahead and kick things off with number one. Royal Caribbean has extended their cancellation of Blue Lagoon shore excursions at Nassau, Bahamas. Royal Caribbean initially announced a temporary cancellation after the excursion had a shuttle boat sink leading to the death of one Royal Caribbean cruiser. That incident occurred on November 14th. The cruise line has now sent an email to book guests notifying them that the cancellations have been extended until mid-January. It is yet to be seen if the other cruise lines will follow suit. Stay tuned. Number two, Holland America's New Amsterdam cruise ship is having its embarkation delayed two days due to severe weather in the Bahamas. The New Amsterdam cruise ship had been in dry dock. But it was scheduled to depart from Port Everglades on Saturday on a seven-day voyage. However, in an email to book guests, Holland America noted that now the cruise will not depart until Monday. Weather is also impacting other cruises. Longtime channel subscriber Mark Lyon is currently on the Explorer of the Seas cruise ship and he reached out noting the severe weather as well. Moving on to number three, Travel Weekly has announced their 2023 Reader's Choice Awards for cruising. Here are some of the highlights. The best for Alaska cruises goes to Princess. The best for Caribbean cruises goes to Royal Caribbean. Hawaii and Pacific cruises goes to Norwegian Cruise Line. European cruises goes to Celebrity Cruises. Family cruises goes to Carnival Cruise Line. And the overall winner for cruising is Royal Caribbean. Look, there were 30 different categories of cruise awards. If you are interested in seeing the full list, I've put that information down in the video description. Next, number four, Royal Caribbean now has smoke-free casinos on all of its Oasis-class ships. The transformation has now been completed on the Symphony of the Seas cruise ship. That was the final ship in the class to complete the transformation. In order to accomplish this, Royal Caribbean had to get rid of the Jazz Club on the ships. The 2,500 square foot space was converted into the new smoke-free venue. Then number five, MSC's newest ship, the MSC Euribia, had to change its embarkation port to a different country. This was for the MSC Euribia sailing that was scheduled to depart yesterday. It was supposed to leave from Loire, France, but it could not do so due to a strike at the port. Instead, MSC had to bus the cruise passengers approximately 300 miles to a port in Belgium. And to my knowledge, they did successfully execute that, and I do know that the ship is now underway. Okay, we have five cruise news pieces remaining, including the top headlines of the day. But quick question, chime in down below. The question for today will help us with some of the planning and research that we are currently doing. And here's the question. What packages or upgrades do you typically purchase for a cruise? Here I'm talking about things such as Wi-Fi, drink package, dining package, things of that sort. Chime in down below with that, and I really appreciate it. But now... On with the cruise news. Number six, Princess Cruises has begun construction on their next ship, the Star Princess. When it launches, the Star Princess will be the largest ship in Princess's fleet. It is currently scheduled to debut in the summer of 2025. Its sister ship, the Sun Princess, is scheduled to debut in February of 2024. Number seven, Port Canaveral is adding fast electric vehicle chargers at the port. Six new charging stations will be added over the next year. They will be located in the port's Cove District parking lot and they will have the capability of charging most electric vehicles within one hour. Moving on to number eight, Port Miami is now the first seaport to have a global entry enrollment center. Global entry allows travelers to expedite through customs. So for example, instead of waiting in line to see a customs officer when you debark a ship or fly in from out of country, global entry allows you to just simply go to a kiosk. It's a great benefit if you travel a lot. In order to do this, you have to fill out an application and be interviewed at a Global Entry Enrollment Center, and that is what Port Miami will now have available. Global Entry is valid for five years, and it includes TSA PreCheck. The application fee is $100. Next, number nine, the U.S. State Department has issued warnings not to drink the tap water in five countries. It is generally a good idea to drink filtered or bottled water if you're not sure about a destination's water supply. 
But I want to quickly share this list so you don't forget and fill up a water bottle while you're visiting one of these locations. The U.S. State Department says to not drink the tap water if you are visiting Indonesia, Cuba, Colombia, the Dominican Republic, or Mexico. And of course, many, many cruises go to some of those destinations. Then in today's editorial segment, number 10, a cruise was canceled after cruisers had boarded the cruise ship and then there was an issue regarding the refund. Here is what happened. Passengers were on board Cunard's Queen Mary 2 cruise ship earlier this year when it was canceled just before departure. Cunard gave each passenger a form to fill out that said, quote, For any incurred expenses with your onward travel arrangements, these will be covered by Cunard. The cruiser that I am familiar with from the cruise spoke to three different Cunard agents, but they were not able to get any additional information beyond the statement. They emailed the cruise line all of the required supporting documents for their expenses. And a few weeks later, they received $4,544. The problem is that the total cost was $6,872. They were shorted over $2,300. So what's the deal? Well, according to the cruise contract, the legal agreement is that, quote, any person or persons refused booking or passage in advance of the scheduled sailing will be given a refund of their voyage fare. However, the refund of the additional expenses is not quite as clear. In the contract, the cruise line insists that they have no liability for any other expenses that may be incurred. But here is the key point. If a cruise line representative agrees to cover your expenses, that supersedes the contract. So here's a few tips should anything like this ever happen to you. First, get any agreement for compensation in writing and ask them to be as specific as possible. If you don't have it in writing, you really don't have much of a leg to stand on. And the second tip is travel insurance, travel insurance, travel insurance. It's relatively cheap, but if you need it, it is well worth it. In regards to the issue with Cunard, the cruiser that I'm familiar with reached out to a consumer advocacy group that's nonprofit, and it is called the Elliott Report. They were able to get in touch with the right people at Cunard. Cunard issued an apology, and they also gave a full refund as they had promised to do. Okay, subscribe and turn the notification bell on to stay up to date with the latest cruise news and information. The next video will be coming out soon, but until then, keep on cruising, and we'll catch you in the next video.